course. Oh. Thank you. I, <laughs> I see you all got a copy of the manual I handed out, The Joy of Clapping. <laughs> Mr. Ray, you sound good tonight. I feel good. We got a good show. Incidentally, I should remind you in the studio audience, I, I know you don't want to be responsible for breaking my streak tonight. I've, I've been a hit in 44 straight monologues. <laughs> Don't, I told you, don't break it, folks. <laughs> Pete Rose didn't do it last night, did he? Oh. No, it was, it was remarkable. He's to be congratulated. He hit safely in, what, 40? Yeah. Four. Four straight games. I think, I think DiMaggio's record is, uh, that's not bad. Uh, have you noticed people who follow baseball are statistically crazy? They love... The guy who made the most stolen bases, the guy who fouled out most. Since Pete Rose has been on that streak, uh, a lot of obscure baseball records are coming to life. For example, did you know that back in 1896, a catcher with the Boston Braves by the name of Carl Butterfingers Fleckman. <laughs> took 17 foul tips below the waist. <laughs> was uh, Butterfingers Fleckman. He was, uh, he was later traded to the uh, Vienna Boys Choir. <laughs> where Fleckman served out his years as the designated eunuch. It was, uh, the Saints. I've been, I like that. I've been, you watch Monday Night, are you a baseball fan? Half and half. Yeah. I, do you watch Monday Night Baseball at all? Occasionally. Occasionally, I turn in Monday Night Baseball, and to me, the highlight last week was when it started to rain during a game, and a midget ground crew came out and pulled a tiny tarpaulin over Howard Cosell's toupee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, you're a great crowd on it. Anybody here from New York? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's cleaning up after your dog? As soon as the law came in, you got out of town, right? <laughs> For those of you who have not heard, back in New York City, which is really kind of one big doggy comfort station. <laughs> look, I, look I, can, I lived in New York 17 years. I, can, I know about New York dogs. I lived on First Avenue. That was the biggest doggy comfort station. Dogs that would come over from Jersey at night. Across the George Washington Bridge to come, come to First Avenue. Well, now in New York City, they have a new law that makes the owner responsible if his dog goes out and does his thing. Uh, I guess that's the way they call it, isn't it? Uh, they fine them up to $100. Now, people are now carrying, there's a new market. People are carrying around little boxes. They're carrying around little what they call poop scoopers. <laughs> and they have actually engaged special police to catch offenders in New York City. And uh, NBC is pretty bright. They plan to make a series out of this. Uh, <laughs> it's called Chips 2. Uh, good work. Uh, it? It's kind of sneaky the way they're catching people in the act, though, in New York. They have undercover men, short undercover men. <laughs> disguised as fire hydrants, and they send them out in its... <laughs> did, you... did you happen to see the uh, little old lady in Manhattan they interviewed the other night on the news? She was walking through Central Park, and she had her chihuahua over her arm and carrying a shovel. And, and somebody stopped and said, is that to clean up after your dog? And she says, no, that's to bury the little bugger. <laughs> she says, they're not sticking me with a $100 fine. And she went, oh, <laughs> lone dissident in the audience. Uh, the postal workers are voting uh, about whether they're going to strike. They put their final ballots in the mail today, so we should know in about a year. <laughs> Let's go to the political scene. That's where all the good humor is. Uh, out here, we have Governor Jerry Brown, and his um, opponent for the gubernatorial race in California is going to be Evel Younger, who is the state attorney general. 
Well, it's already heated up. I love the things that politicians come up with. Jerry Brown said yesterday he accused Evel Younger of squandering the taxpayer's money because Evel Younger has a shower in his office. Is that stretching a little far? You see, Governor Brown does not have a shower in his office. Uh, Jerry has, uh, Jerry's very frugal. He has a cheaper method to getting clean at work. Stands on his desk nude, <laughs> flicks his bick until the sprinkler system goes off. <laughs> They come up with the darndest things. Um, Brown also accused Younger of driving to work in a Lincoln Continental with stereo. See, Jerry doesn't do that. He comes in with a skateboard wearing transistor earphones. <laughs> so that's it. You know we have a new dollar uh, coin coming out in the United States? And it has the likeness of the woman, I guess, who was the, what, got the women's vote in this country? Suffragette. Suffragette Susan B. Anthony is on the new dollar. The other side, yes, yeah, I think that's right. It is not as big as the old silver dollar. I understand it's closer to the size of a quarter, which is going to be... Well, that's good, because the way the dollar is going in a few months, we can use it in a gumball machine. Uh, <laughs> in a few months, we can do that. Just a little teeny coin. Gumball. Look, I think it's nice to honor women that way. I think a woman should be on a coin. They... No, I mean it. They... I'll say... Eventually, they end up with all the money anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Would you ever notice that? Women control most, they say, or they control most of the money. Yes. I think in the United States. You ever go into one of those tours of those ocean liners? It's all you see is little women sitting there with blue hair. <laughs> with the insurance money. Raul! <laughs> <laughs> That's true, the guy's busted his chops working to get... <laughs> to get all that insurance so the widow can go to, you know, on the boat. <laughs> well, what was I talking about? Oh, speaking of money, Christina Onassis uh, got married yesterday. Did you see that? She married an unknown Russian in Moscow, and it was a typical, I understand, communist wedding. After the uh, ceremony, the uh, couple drove off in their car dragging shoes behind it. Unfortunately, the shoes were worn by American journalists at the time. <laughs> weird. She married a fellow by the name of Serge Kuzov. Kuzov? Kuzov? Kuzov. I'm talking to Freddie like he knows Russian. <laughs> okay. Kuzov. Kuzov. That's it. Serge Kuzov. Right. I don't know what he does, but... Uh, <laughs> kind of strange, isn't it? She was looking for Mr. Right and ended up with Mr. Left. <laughs> A lot of people were suspicious that he might have married her just for her money, because during the ceremony, uh, during the exchange of wedding vows, the groom promised to marry her for richer and richer. <laughs> Last Friday night on the show, this is kind of interesting, we had David Horowitz with us, whom you know has a show on NBC called Consumer Byline, has a syndicated show around the country. He's a consumer advocate, and Friday night on the show, he had to leave the show early because his wife was gonna, was gonna give birth to a baby. And they gave birth to the baby over the weekend, I guess. Uh, Dave and his wife, Suzanne, gave birth to a little. I don't know what the weight of the consumer was. Uh, well, it's with David. I want to congratulate David. And all I have to say is, David, it's going to cost you a fortune, and you will not be able to return it. <laughs> well, let's see. Front page picture in the paper today about smuggling of drugs in the United States. Did you see that? Coke. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, no. The drug smuggling, especially cocaine, they said, has increased 1,500% since last year. And one of the figures was that this year at the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Uh, at Dulles Airport, last year, police confiscated $78 million worth of drugs alone. And that was just on Air Force One. <laughs> and somebody... No, no. No, no. <laughs> that really is a joke. No, they didn't find it there at all. Nothing there. We got a good show tonight. Burt Reynolds is with us tonight, and he is going to...
Bert is going to try to keep his streak going of 44 consecutive, well, it's not important, <laughs> victories, so to speak. Uh, we also have a lovely young lady, Susan Sarandon, is with us tonight. Andrew Tobias, he is fascinating, all about investments. We'll be with you in just a couple of What? The, the cream in that has gone no, I, I, bad. I put a little Excessive coffee thing. back here, which I sip occasionally, but I think the, the cream, you ever been... Yeah. The cream, like if you go to a cafe sometime, yeah. the cream has been sitting out for about a day and a half, yeah. and you put it in hot coffee, and all of a sudden it looks like a bayou forming on the top. Yes. Of, mm. like a Deep in the Everglades. Like a swamp. Yeah. No, that's really not. So I'll pass that. Yes. Have you been? Fine, thank you. I saw you on, and Mr. de Cordova on, uh, was it... Well, Monday night, wasn't Monday it? night, we were out. Yes. We went to see Frank Sinatra at the amphitheater, and uh, not plugging Frank, he needs no plug, except to say it's, it's outstanding night. Mm -hmm. He was there with Sarah Vaughan. Outstanding night. Yeah. He's still, uh, it's probably the best there is in the world at taking a lyric and phrasing mm -hmm. it and saying what a song is supposed to say, yeah. right? He gets better and better. Every time I see him, he's better than the last time. Fantastic performer. Yeah. Anyway, here is an interesting book. It looks notice, like it. Notice the blend. Yeah. I, I'm, the, yeah. I'm the prince of blends, folks. I didn't get this yeah. job because I don't know how to blend. Well, Sinatra and Sex, it's... That's uh, right. It goes together. It's got a great title. Called This Was Sex. And, um... <laughs> by Sandy Teller. And it's kind of a cute book. It's the humor of yesterday's expert advice on sex, marriage, and morals. Hmm. In other words, what people felt, uh about sex maybe 100 years ago or even mm -hmm. 50 years ago and the way the manners and the mores of the country, as you know, have mm -hmm. well changed. Yes. Even on television in the last 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years, right? I'm going to read you some of these things because they, they're, they're kind of interesting. This is from a paper by Dio Lewis in 1874. I assume he's some kind of an expert on, on sexual matters. And the chapter is, if you're in the market for a bride, you'll want to use this valuable shopping list. Now, here's what they're th they were saying in... 1874. You are thinking of matrimony. Consider the following suggestions. Do not select a woman with a temperament very similar to your own. You may, you may judge of temperament by the color of the hair and skin, by the shape of the body, and intensity of the nervous system. Hmm. Now, how you find all that out, I'm not sure. <laughs> Says, do not select a woman with a forehead shaped like your own. <laughs> Don't ask. If you are large, do not marry a small woman. The disparity in size should not be great. The several reasons for this advice are too obvious to need mention. <laughs> <laughs> he just yeah, leaves yeah. it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid a small waist as you would the plague. <laughs> now that's mm. considered quite nice, a small yeah. waist, right? But in those days, apparently not. If you would join your fortunes to those of a pale, nervous, cold-blooded, fainting creature, you will spend the rest of your life bemoaning your folly. Hmm. Do not select an overdressed woman. Excess of jewelry and other ornaments shows a weakness, not to say vice. Intolerable in your nearest friend and companion is vulgar and cheap and is never found in superior persons. Hmm. Why do we tell our wives that yeah. jewelry is cheap? Cheap, yes. <laughs> they think it's cheap now. Yes. <laughs> Shun the untidy. Shun the untidy as you would an open drain. Hmm. <laughs> That's quite Give an quite unloving a daughter a wide berth. Avoid ignorant girls and those with excessive accomplishments. If in this country, yeah, you see, they, the male chauvinist was very, very big then. If in this country a young woman is exceptionally ignorant, it proves a lack of capacity, while an excess of accomplishment shows a certain lightheadedness. You see, a certain mm -hmm. lack of the plain substantial qualities which are so desirable in a lifelong companion, mm -hmm. like scrubbing and cooking yes. and sewing. <laughs> Avoid very homely and very handsome women. If your choice is very ugly, she will constantly wound your taste in herself and in your children. And if she is very beautiful, all of the men in the neighborhood will be likely to find it out. <laughs> and some of them may tell her about it. <laughs> or she may glance in, look in the glass and discover it yourself. Don't marry your cousin. Well, I think that's illegal anyway, yes. isn't it? Yes. At least your first cousin. Your wife should be over 20 years of age from 1874. 
by Dio Lewis. That's an amazing. Dio Lewis is. That's been around since 1874. And that particular article. It never, sure. never crossed our path before tonight. Just tonight. <laughs> that little pamphlet could have saved us a fortune. <laughs> I mean, we, we are busy, we're working hard, but we had time to read that. That's right. Well, thank God you brought it in tonight. I figured that. Because it's all there, one would say. Everything in the world you'd ever want to know about finding a good mate is in that article. You, you're wrong, rabbit test breath. Oh, Let me explain to you. There's more yet, yet more. Our loyal staff has they came up with their some own other suggestions. suggestions here about when you're contemplating marriage. For example, don't marry a dead lady. <laughs> Avoid marriage to a woman who can open envelopes with her breath. <laughs> Not in there. <laughs> Do not marry a girl if she has the name Monk tattooed on her chest. <laughs> Never marry a girl who only bathes in odd number of years. <laughs> Do not select a girl you meet on a chain gang. It didn't have it in there. <laughs> Avoid any girl who stores cold cuts in her pantyhose. <laughs> Never marry a girl who uses black flag as a deodorant. <laughs> Avoid any girl whose phone number you find scribbled on a Bulgarian weightlifter's thigh. <laughs> Don't marry a girl who carries Hitler's picture in a locket. <laughs> Bad. A girl will make an excellent wife if she knows how to bake. Before you marry a girl, Check out our buns. Do not marry a girl who's had a fungus named after her. Never marry a girl. Never, ma Never marry a girl named Marie who used to be known as Murray. That's right. Avoid any girl who's listed in the Guinness Book of Records under consecutive belches. Be suspicious if you propose marriage and the girl says, first I'll have to check it with my pimp. Never marry a girl who keeps a charge account at the free clinic. That is good to you shall never. Oh. You, you like the fungus one, huh? Oh, that, that ranks. It's like a hat full of Ralph. That's way up there. A oh. hat full of Ralph. We have with us when we return, and we're going to return. Oh, by golly, no this isn't about it. it. We're not going to do this 20 minutes and go home while we're ahead. Although sometimes we'd be smart to quit while we're ahead. Bert Reynolds is here, Susan Sarandon, Ren Woods, who's a great singer. Mm. And uh, Andrew Tobias, who's uh, he's kind of an investment counselor and tells you what is... Uh, Tells you some dumb investments, some good things, and what's happening in the market and so forth. We're going to do this first, and then Burt Reynolds will join us. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate tonight. What can I say? Burt Reynolds is not only a good actor, he's become a very good director. And he currently has uh, two very successful pictures out. One is called The End. Uh, which he, I believe, directed that Scream, and also yeah. uh, starred in it, mm -hmm. and just released a new film called uh, Hooper. Not Hopper, Hooper, right? Hooper. Yeah, which has, uh, it's all about the greatest stuntman. Uh, I think it's Hooper, the greatest stuntman alive, I think is the complete title. Or He'll certainly like remember. Or should remember it, he yeah. just finished it. <laughs> Will you welcome Mr. Bird Reynolds? When 
you know, you re the way you, the entrance, the way your entrances have changed. Yes. Since you first started on the show. Gotten slower, haven't you? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, yeah. can I, can I do your entrance? Sure, sure. Just introduce me and say, Bertman, you used to kind of klutz out here, you know, and come over and sit down. And yeah. Now that you got everything in the world going for you. Yeah. I'll just, just I'll say Bert you. Reynolds. It's okay. just, it's just so cool. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the sexiest, <laughs> most wonderful actors to get an award in a car in midair. <laughs> Bert Reynolds. a cool intro. You just, hey, 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 I'm here, man. How you feeling? That was nice. I you like that? that? that nice. I didn't realize it had gotten that slow. Oh, well, just, <laughs> well, you know, you're just, you're quelling. Yeah, I'm With the applause. <laughs> you're quelling with the yes. adulation, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I was quelling there. How you been? Good, yeah. good, yeah. Ed and I had a good time the other night. Saturday night? Yes. Saturday night we had a little party, and uh, it's really terrific. You went to his house for a No, party? no, he, he came to my house to a party. Had a, had a lot of people there. Had a great time. That, was good idea. All the, I, that band, that guy, I knew that fellow. Incredible, the, the three-piece band. Plays the flute and, and the piano at the same time. Was it incredible? And we had, uh, we had a, yeah. I, had to, I had to make a choice, Johnny, because I, I, you know, I had to pick some comics, you know. I didn't uh -huh. want any competition, so. That should have been easy. I had Marty Allen. <laughs> You actually had a party? It's I a had a big party. party. I had a big party. And, and everybody dancing. I was so everybody surprised. Was dancing. Everybody got up the dance. I was going to invite the John, but I, I was afraid he'd send over a cassette of the best of Carson. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you putting me on just to make me feel that you really you didn't have a party? Well, a little gathering, yeah. maybe, maybe 60, 70 people. <laughs> well, you don't throw parties very often, do you? Once every six or seven years. But, uh, I know what it is. My, uh, the Postal Service has been very slow in my neighborhood, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you sent the invitation, and I just didn't, uh, I didn't get it he yet. He called me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he can call you again tomorrow, because you'll, you'll be free to go. <laughs> Look, when you put this list together, I don't want to put you on the spot, because I don't think it's polite to ask somebody, why didn't you invite me to your party? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you, you can invite whomever you want. Yeah. Well, I know that you, uh, you, you're shy about parties. Don't um, I don't go to many parties. You used to go to parties. I mean, your crazy days, you know. Well, You used we to all... go there and set the oldest person on fire. We all did little... <laughs> we all had our Laura. One yeah. time you make a big deal out of it. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we put her out immediately. <laughs> You don't make a big thing about it, but uh, yes. did my, when you were making up the guest list, did you and your uh, your, your lady friend say, yeah, We said, hey, I said, hey, listen, he, he probably would, uh, you know, he doesn't like parties. And what's the sense of getting a, a turn down? It'd make me feel bad, you know. Oh, well, true. You know what I mean? Sure. How about next year? You want to come? What night? <laughs> <laughs> I have such a full schedule. I know. I'll go check I it know. out. I said, I know. May come on a particular night that I have something. It was a, it was a good party. I, well, you if you'd like invited it. me, I probably would have. Really? We played charades. Did you like to do that? You're kidding. <laughs> well, you wouldn't. Yeah. Have. Would you have. you played charades yeah, at this party? Yeah, sounds like charades. a sparkler. They're special. You had pin the tail on the donkey too, oh. and uh, spin it was the bottle. a different kind of charades. You have to draw it. Oh. Makes it very interesting. And, and not with chalk. <laughs> I'm not going to follow or pursue that <laughs> at all. All right. Because I know your demented mind, and you would say, <laughs> say something demented. That's, I would have, yes. Somebody told me you finally took a vacation. Because you've been working. You've had one picture after another the past couple of years. I but somebody said you finally got away. And went all on. through the South, which is wonderful. Did you? Yeah. Well, well you're from it. Florida originally. Yeah, I love the South. God, thank you. <laughs> really nice. Got a lot of cotton in the car, if you'd like some. Did you get uh, and uh, went to, down where I did the deliverance. That was wonderful. I thought that was in Georgia. Is that in Georgia? Georgia, yeah. Did that in Georgia? Shot the Rapids again. Did you really? Yeah, it was wonderful. That's it's, incredible. It's, it's strange how commercial that's gotten, that river, though, because, well, not commercial. I mean, they, they keep it clean and everything. They don't have, you know, cans and things floating down, but right. they've, they've named different things. And there's a, 
a thing called Sodomy Falls now. I remember. <laughs> I remember the picture, picture well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Deliverance Rock. And they actually point out the they very... They point out. Account. And the guy was pointing out, he'd for, you know, he, I guess because his spiel was so good, you know. He said, right here is where Burt Reynolds jumped off the boat. And uh, I said, wait a minute. I was here. He said, oh, yeah, right. And he went on and he said, then John Voigt uh, had this double. I said, wait, John Voigt didn't have a double. None of us had doubles. We all did it ourselves. He said, oh, yeah, right. He just went right on with his spiel. He didn't even... <laughs> Once the guy gets his It was like Cal right Worthington. Once you get him wound up... <laughs> <laughs> We have to take a break here, sell a little something. We'll come back. You have a film clip tonight? And sure. And a lot of those wonderful anecdotes that you tell so well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all about the party. We are back. We're talking with Burt Reynolds. We're not talking with him yet. We're just sitting here, as you can see. But he's here, and uh, Susan Sarandon is going to be with us. Yeah, real nice. Nice lady. Well, you know a lot of nice ladies, don't you? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you, so in, do you. In your line of work. In my line of work? Well, you're single. Right. But I'm, I'm married. That's your problem. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll agree with that. <laughs> How do we know that this is the real Burt Reynolds? As yes. I hear rumors. Yeah. And this happens very, not infrequently oh, in our business. Bimbo. A look-alike. Is that true that there's somebody you, been going around town or around the country uh, who looks similar to you? Well, apparently he, looks, off? apparently he looks... Uh, you know who was doing that once? Jimmy Cagney phoned me once. The great James Cagney, who just had a birthday last week. Oh, uh, he's he, wonderful. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. And there was some young man going around the country for one time claiming to be Jimmy Cagney's son. Yeah. And it's strange how people will accept that. He just walked <laughs> in and said... I'm Jimmy Cagney's son. Right. 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 And people said, gee, that's very good. And he signed the tab, and he was going around the country doing well, that. Well, this guy does, is, works for some agency in here in town. And they oh, have with the, doubles. I've seen yeah. the commercial. And uh, at the, he was at uh, the Sahara the other night. And uh, Charo, you know, I like Charo. She's a nice lady. Uh, but she was introducing Burt Reynolds from the audience. This guy, this bimbo, was standing up, <laughs> taking a bow, and then going to his room and playing with his rubber duck. And, uh, I mean, I... In other words, he actually stood up and... Yeah. The guy looks uh, apparently enough like me uh, and does a lot of that, uh, what you did when you came out the curtain there. A cool, uh... Yeah. Whatever that is. Uh, cool. It's looking virile. He stands there and thinks something. And uh, thinks he's, uh, you know, studied humility with Kirk Douglas. <laughs> and uh, this guy, this guy, apparently, he looks enough like me until you get up real close, but he's got short teeth. Very short teeth. So if you can get this guy to smile. He's also got another thing that's shorter than mine. We won't go into that. Well, However, you're not going to trap me into this discussion and, and, no, no. and, follow, and proceed on that line of... Uh... This guy has it also went to uh, Catalina. The Sons of the Pioneers were playing out there. And a friend of mine named Rus Rusty Richards, who I've known for 20 years, saw me in the audience, he thought. Except I was ac acting rather obnoxious for me. And he said, that's kind of, because I like people, and yeah. I wouldn't be, you know, hanging on to people. And besides, I don't drink, and this guy was all over. So they introduced him, and he came up, and it wasn't until he shook hands with the guy, and he smiled, and he saw his little baby teeth. And measured his teeth. But he knew it wasn't me. So anyway, that guy, I want him to know that unless he shapes his act up, I'm going to have my two cousins, Carmine and Vito. <laughs> uh, Very tough ladies. They are going to, yes. Very tough. Very tough, yeah, very, very tough. tough dames. They're going to call on him, and he'll be able to imitate a celebrity <laughs> after this, but it'll be one of the Muppets. <laughs> no, that could be... Uh, I, I, I've seen that commercial. There is a guy who uh, rents people to, yeah. uh, to go out. I think one of them is Jimmy... What would Jimmy you rent them for? I mean, what would they... Parties. Do? They go to parties. Like, Jimmy Durante is the one look-alike. Uh, yeah. There's one that looked like Telly Savalas for a while. I, one that looked like you. Yeah. One that looked like Cher. My God, there's, there's people And they go around. mingle, you know. There's a whole bunch of people out there who think I have no talent at all. Can you imagine what they think of the guy who imitates me? Sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what's going to happen? You're going to be walking down the street, and some guy's going to come up and go, and yeah. open your mouth before right. they find I'll out. It. Glad to show him. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he wants to check, it's all mine. Oh, all righty, folks, remember, you said that. That's right. I, I don't want to... Oh, by the way, I'm going to Vegas tomorrow night to see David Steinberg, so if, uh, if anybody... If I do stand up in the audience, don't... because I don't have long teeth. <laughs> That's right. Would your double have said that? 
I know. This He's is got no you. class. You are cl you are this, you're, you're the clone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's talk about Hooper. I know that you um, have done a lot of your stunts, and frankly, all of your stunts in all of your pictures. Uh, you are, you have a stuntman's card, I understand. Yeah. From the, because uh, mm -hmm. those guys really, I've had a lot of them on the show, and we've done some various things. They really earn their money, and they're, they're the, skilled, they're and they the know what they're doing. Yeah. They take all the chances, uh, but when I say take chances, they really plan those things so well, but there's always the possibility of something yeah. at the last minute going wrong, and they do great They're work. They're professional athletes, really. Is what Absolutely. And this is all about stuntmen, right? Yeah, it's about a stuntman who's uh, gotten to an age where he should retire. And, uh, and there's a young stuntman coming along to, that's pushing him. Right. So he pushes him into doing the, the greatest stunt in the world. What is that? Can you... Jumping 400 and some feet in a car across the cavern which was a silly stunt to do, and uh, they got a lot of money for it. Those guys are not here now. <laughs> They're in a home. <laughs> for the terminally uh, weird. Yes, for short people. What, what did they jump? What was the uh, biggest stunt they did uh, in uh, this? Uh... One guy d did a jump out of a helicopter, 230-some feet, which was the world record. And another guy... Into uh, water? Uh... Yeah, A.J. Uh, Perkunas did that, and then Buddy Joe Hooker came off... Uh, a 25-story building rappelled down the glass building with a rope. And then they did the jump uh, across the cavern, which was incredible. It was, it's an un unbelievable picture for stunts. And uh, as I say, if they have a new category in the Academy, I haven't had a lot of nominations, you know. If they would just, uh, if they would get a category for the best performance by an actor in a car in midair. <laughs> You know, that's, that's not a I have a hell of a shot. You know, that's a legitimate idea, though. They don't really recognize the stunt people at, at, at award time. They should. They really yeah. should. That'd be a, that would be also a very interesting spot. It'd be a great spot. You imagine picking the, the greatest stunt of the year. And to show the film of the, say, five nominees for the greatest stunt and then make an award. That would It'd be terrific. A little pizzazz. What are we going to see here on this uh, little film uh, from Hooper? This is uh, a bunch of stuntmen are at a party having, and getting a, a little crazy. And uh, two guys come over to pick a fight with them because they, they put a dime in the jukebox and they can't hear. 50 cents, actually. And one of the guys that comes over is Terry Bradshaw, who plays uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. And uh, the other guy is a guy named Bob Tessier, who is an animal. And uh, <laughs> they come over and we get in a little fight. And this is a teaser for them. Okay. You'll see a short excerpt here from Hooper. against 12. Seven. Seven against 12. Well, looks like it's a little uneven. You guys will have to go back to Houston and get some more guys. Big trouble. Yeah. It almost from it looked like almost like Laurel and Hardy for a minute. You know when they did the thing, the deliberate oh, yes. thing. When we did our little uh, whipped cream uh, bit. The, the night, night we stood here. When when I, uh, stu I did, and I poured uh, <laughs> stuff like this down. Like you remember that night? What a crazy night! It was a crazy night. I it? remember that night. She was crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. More? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you look like a pregnant Eskimo. I got, uh, I'd like to let one of these out my fly, but it would be just too silly. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back so and say goodnight because I know you have. Anyway, the picture is called Hooper, and just to show that you and Terry Bradshaw, uh, where you were punching each other out in the movie, yes. are really good friends. Somebody got this still, obviously, during a break. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I hope this is during a break in the movie or, and <laughs> not a scene, to show you that really you and Terry are really yes. uh, good friends. <laughs> is this a... Uh... We've been seeing a lot of each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming. Thank really, you. It's always great I'm, to have I you I can't here. wait to uh, go and try to get this warmed up as fast as possible. Like it's... it's very strange. I'm... It's a funny feeling, but I'm growing to like it. I know. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming. Thank today. you, John. It's good to see you. when he comes on the show. We start acting like infantiles. Time before, about three times yes. ago, remember the night with Dom it's Deloise? Yes. Well, I'm gonna, before, it's happened again. I'm going to freshen up just a little bit. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Silliness tonight, craziness. Yes. I want to thank Bert. He's fun to have on the show. He is great. But he'd go, he'll go with you on anything you want to yeah. do. If we took scissors and started cutting each other's clothes, he, he, would, would, he would stand there and go right with it. We'll save that for another night. My next, my next guest is a charmer. <laughs> bright, talented actress who's been with us many times. She's currently starring in Pretty Baby and soon to be released King of the Gypsies. Would you welcome, please, Susan Sarandon. <laughs> You like that? You have a little spot on your tongue. I have got. I tried to get neat as neat as I could before you came out. Yeah. Do you like that when you come out? You get whistles from guys and so forth. From whomever, sure. Yeah, the women's uh, movement would say you're a you're a sexist object and uh, uh, no, 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 male chauvinist pig. Who no, as long as I so can forth. whistle back. Why not? That's okay. How you been? I've been great, but um. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's a hard act to follow this. Oh, uh, no. We just do crazy things. I know, but do... I mean, is this kind of boys will be boys, or... Uh, I don't know what happens. Is this we what get... goes on in the locker room, I mean, you know? I don't know what happens with Bert. There are certain people... Uh, you you kind of get that twinkle in the eye. I've heard what happens with Bert. And that mischievous... <laughs> yes. <laughs> what he does with young ladies, I have the slightest idea. I don't idea, either. But... I might go on record. But it's one of those... Don't you ever do silly things? Haven't you ever oh, wanted to do something I like that? Silly and just. Things. Sure, didn't I usually get paid a, for it. No, but didn't you ever want to go to a party, for example, and, and a very dignified party and say there's an electric fan going and throw the egg in the electric fan or just do something completely horrific <laughs> just to do it? No. Really? No. Well, I, I like things like that. The more dignified oh, no, or no. staged something is, if something happens that in the middle of it. I think that's, uh, that's fun. No, that is great. That's great. More people should do that. If we had more people throwing eggs in fans, it would be a nicer world, I'm sure. I think so. Yes. I totally support Kierkegaard you. Kierkegaard couldn't have said that better. In fact, I think he did say that. Kierkegaard said, if we could all throw an egg in an electric fan, the world would be a better place. And then, yeah. Course. That's right. There's ice cubes on the floor. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, silliness. Yeah, What's the this... silliest thing you've ever done? The most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Become an actress. Really? <laughs> Sure. Well, are you, are you basically a shy person? Yeah. Some people say that shy people, and I know a lot of actors and actresses who are basically shy people. And when people see them, uh, the audience thinks that all actors or actresses are very outgoing, very gregarious, and very often not true. 
No, that's why this this show is hard because you don't have a character to be, you know. You don't that's, have the lines and yeah, so forth. I, I, I'm determined to keep coming on it until I can breathe properly while I'm talking. <laughs> <Is> it, <laughs> because I get petrified. Is it a real chore for you? Oh yeah. I try yeah. to make it. I try to make it easy. You know? Oh no, it's not your fault. It's yeah. it, it's it's ego because you're. I I figure you come out here to either be informative or entertaining. But, uh, <laughs> do you, have, do you have any little tricks you, you do before you come on? Because I get nervous when I go do shows. If I do something else outside of this, uh -huh. if I'm working in a nightclub or doing a concert date or I, if I'm on somebody else's television show, I, I do the, the breathing. You ever do that before you come on? No, I find I have heart. Just slowly take like three or four real deep breaths and let it out very slowly. Okay. And just, and then just very slowly, just, it puts a little oxygen into the system and, It's not working. Not working. <laughs> well, I didn't see it was a mess. No, it was immediate. <laughs> you don't get nervous when you do this show. No, when I do this show particularly. Because this is like home. Yeah. 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 And you know who you are. Maybe if I could figure that out, it would be easy. Were you shy as a youngster? Oh, yeah. 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 I never thought of being an actress. I totally fell into it. It wasn't anything intentional. That would have been the last thing you would have probably selected? Oh, yeah. I wanted to be a wave in the ocean. I mean, that's as far as I got in my evolution. It wasn't a... I, did, I never made... You mean the, a member of the waves or just a wave in the... No, just in the ocean. The kind that keeps just flowing and, you know... That's kind of nice. Yeah, and it was before, I've never heard of somebody saying they wanted no. to be something and it was, not real. It was before drugs, too. Well, before the drug scene. Yes. You just wanted to be a wave. <laughs> yeah. There's something yeah. to be said for that. Yeah. You come in and break, and then you leave, and you keep coming back again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've never thought of that, what I would like to be. <laughs> it's if your you could... show. You can think whatever. We could take the time. I'd like to be a bottle of liquid Prell. <laughs> liquid you know, Prell. Well, you just, yeah. It comes out so easy. And yes, uh, it floats down. It's on very side. sexual, Prell. You know. It's sensuous, you see. Very what sensual. would you like to be? If you a could be cloud. Some... Just floating along. A cloud. Just keep rolling. That's it, yes. Tommy? Tommy? <laughs> Let's wake him up first. What, what, if you could be something other than a human being or an animal, what would you like to be? I am that person. <laughs> I have the bogus idea what that means, but I don't care. Okay, we'll sell something. We'll come right back to that person and this person. We're talking with Wave. <laughs> wave Susan Sarandon. Thank you. That's interesting. I wanted to be a wave. Now, you did a movie called, uh, had to do with gypsies, right? Pardon me? Had to do with gypsies. Yes, it's called King of the Gypsies. Uh, yeah. Frank Pearson directed it. Uh, gypsies Frederico are an interesting writers. people. There are a lot of myths about them. Yeah. Uh, some not so good and some, uh, some good. They get bum-wrapped a lot in certain mm -hmm. quarters. Mm -hmm. Did you do any research into... Because there are thousands and thousands of... Thousands, about 10,000 in New York alone, yeah. Gypsies? Yeah. Did you... Um, well, I was very fortunate. Some... There's a, a, an ex-cop called uh, Eddie Coyne who took me yeah. around to kind of infiltrate the mm -hmm. underground, and it was... It was very interesting, and uh, you know, I started off thinking I was going to play Rita Hayworth with kind of shoulder, you well, know, that's, bare, that's playing tambourines, yeah. but it's yeah, nothing like that. But they're wonderful. It's and, a very um, closed uh, kind of society. Well, in order to survive, they've had to be. Yeah, right. And uh, in this in this day, when everyone has credit cards and is on computers and and there's all kinds of files on you, they're they've survived. Uh, and not only survived, but managed to remain anonymous, which is wonderful. Right. Um, it's, it, I saw a rough cut of the film the other day, and uh, it's, it's quite wonderful. And, and what's great about it is that it's very surprising. And that's, it's, it's to the credit of the director and the producer right. that it is, but um, it, that's very much what the gypsies are like. When you think you've got them figured out, suddenly they contradict themselves, you know, right. in a way. And um, for instance, they have no guilt. The guilt does not enter into their vocabulary, which was something I had to learn, which is difficult. I didn't for, realize that. Yeah. And uh, because you can't con people, you can't operate that way if you have guilt. You know, I, I tried stealing things, for instance. I can't. <laughs> so you would be, uh, had, the word would be amoral then? So you just have... Well, whatever your conditioning is, but they're um, incredibly joyous and have right. a lot of dignity. And um, 
very emotional and very mercurial uh, without being self-indulgent they'll be very angry and then they'll turn right away and and become very uh, sweet and and they love their children and and they've got a great sense of humor you know it's taken for granted that they'll try to con you but the 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 um, spirit in which it's done is very different for instance than corporate embezzlement or something right. you're not saying that they don't do that I mean. i'm not saying one way or the other what they do exactly but they uh, <laughs> uh they manage to make a living the women actually are the are the main breadwinners right. since uh the men don't deal in horses at least not in manhattan and the uh they're not making copper kettles anymore the women are responsible for going out when you see those storefronts with uh fortune tellers they're all gypsies right. did Have you ever go to one Unfortunately, I can read palms, so I've never... Let oh, me see. Aha! Uh -huh. Forget the egg for a second and... Uh... Yes, you've had Burt Reynolds on your show recently. Yeah. Right? Uh, very long lifeline. Very interesting love line. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little detour now and then, you notice yes, in there? Yes. <laughs> Straightens out eventually, thank goodness. Yes, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Well, they looked at... See that star? Yeah, I see hand. that. Well, I, don't, I don't have one of those. Well, when, yeah, when the gypsies saw that, they asked me to read their palms. <laughs> that's, that's good? Yeah, but, but they're very good at reading people. They're very good at dealing with people and understanding people. And, they're pretty good uh, psychologists, right? Exactly, exactly. Most of them don't read and write, but they're very, very uh, wise in other ways. Yeah. And you don't, you don't put any great uh, store in palm reading or phrenology, reading bumps on the heads, or as far as character goes, do you? Or tea leaves and things like that? Sure, I believe just about everything. Oh, come on. <laughs> really? Sure, sure, why not? I mean, I would never make a decision. I would follow my heart and my intuition when it comes to that. But it's, it's interesting, coincidentally, what people can pick up and what they can say. And... Yeah. Has anybody ever told you anything really discerning about yourself that they wouldn't normally know? Oh, sure, sure, very specific things. Like, for and, example? Um, Usually they say, well, you're, uh, you've had some uh, recent setbacks, you, uh, you've had some stomach problems, which everybody has, like every other week, yeah. you know, everybody goes a little gas, and they say, oh, you're, <laughs> oh, and you have, uh, you're, make, you're going to, you, you're thinking about traveling, right? Or you mm -hmm. have traveled recently? Mm -hmm. Well, most people, yeah, gee, I'm mm -hmm. going to go. If you use a little psychology, you know, you can do a fairly good reading. Especially in and, a and city where a lot of, of the people travel. Have you ever been to one? Fortune teller? Yeah. I remember once I was in the service. And I was in Seattle, I was in the Navy, and it was went by one of these storefronts, and the gypsy gals came out and, hey, sailor, read your fortune. And I'd heard, you know, you could get ripped off, and it was only $10. So I remember what I did. I took a $10 bill, and I tore it in half. I gave her half, and I says, read the fortune, and I'll give you the other half. Oh, you're a gypsy. Hmm? That's very gypsy. That's yeah. interesting. Oh, so cheap. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't know. I thought I was going to get conned or something. The, so. um, some of the people, to give you an insight into gypsy psychology or, or logic, which is no. very similar to that, they, uh, some people from the film went to a gypsy wake, and at a gypsy wake, um, they're not really superstitious gypsies, but just to hedge their bets when someone dies, they try to stay on good terms with them, you know? Should their Oh, you, wouldn't, you don't call that superstitious, you mean? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I would call that maybe superstitious. Covering but, your um, bets, right? Yeah, and so they go to the wake and they say nice things and they put in uh, junk food, devil dogs, uh, you know, stuffed grape leaves, money, a lot of money, jewelry, maybe some liquor, uh, anything that the guy might like. Or, they you put know, it in the, the coffin? They put it in the coffin, they, uh, stubs from the bedding or whatever. And uh, this That's one was particularly... Idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. And this family Some of that stood, junk food and those fast food things could bring you back to life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on a great And they beyond. stood guard and they counted all the money, the family, and they when everyone was finished depositing it was in the thousands of dollars and then they they counted it up they wrote a check put the check in the coffin shut it up and took the cash <laughs> <laughs> there's good business you know very good business and the check goes to the great beyond well i mean sure if he should come back to collect it i'm sure they'd make good with the loan <laughs> if he comes back to collect it of course they can make yeah, good it yeah. sounds fascinating though yeah they're wonderful we'll take a break we're coming back in just a moment there we go Pius uh, writes a regular column on investing for Esquire magazine, and he has a fascinating book. It's, it's, there's some humor in it and a lot of good common sense. It's called The Only Investment Guide You'll Ever Need. And I could use a little that advice. Would you welcome Andrew Tobias? <laughs> Well, 
I suppose most people come to you, uh, guys who write columns on investing and say, what stock should I buy or something like that. You don't... Just the wrong way to approach it. That's not the way you do really, it. Really, I mean, to, to try to find one stock... Um, Isn't that what people really want to do, though? They want to find something... They and... want to get rich quick. I can't help. <laughs> I've gotten burned getting rich quick. Uh, in fact, the original title for this, I was thinking of calling it um, a Simple-Minded Investment Guide for People Who Have Gotten Burned Getting Rich Quick Before. Because we've that, all done that. That includes all of us. Most of us always want to buy the stock after it starts to move, right? And you see the, what the glamour thing is, and somebody says, that's too late, isn't the it? The biggest mistake most people make, I think, when it hits Time Magazine, the cover, right? Everyone says, hey, this is going to be really hot. <laughs> Gambling stocks, right? Wow, all of a sudden it seems like the thing to do. It would have been the thing to do uh, a few months ago. The smart people who they always do it before. That's right. Yeah. Sure. What, what's going on with the dollar? You know, is, is it <laughs> it's people, you hand. hear various things. They say, well, the dollar loses its power. Yeah, the yen is down to 190 or 91 now or something like that in the Japanese market. But other people say, well, that's good here. It's good and it's bad. Um, it's bad for inflation because anything you buy that's made in Japan is going to cost a lot more. Mm -hmm. And it's good for unemployment because we're much more competitive now in the world markets than we were. Um, but it's got to stop pretty soon. Um, the, the government deficits that we run and the uh, lack of any energy policy are, are killing the dollar abroad. The other countries in the, in the world are, are looking for us to be responsible, which we yeah. seem to be beginning to do. This is a big question to ask you in a couple of seconds. I, I don't think you expected it. Last night on television, they said, well, the Treasury Department quit selling Treasury notes because they'd reached the, the federal debt limit of $582 billion. I may be off something, a billion here or there. But they may raise that soon. The people don't understand that. In other words, the government says, well, we'll raise our debt limit to maybe $600 billion. Oh, they, they, the debt's a lot bigger than that. It's, yeah. um, they have a, they've been working on a temporary um, allowance, I guess, for a while, and I, I, I imagine it expired. But they have to raise it. We, we have no choice. We keep spending money on, on government programs without uh, getting enough taxes in, in return. And you can't, the whole system won't grind to a halt. We have to... Uh, I guess, change the system and right. begin to prune back on government services. Uh, but no, they'll just raise the debt, debt limit. Now, I was looking on the back of the book here. You talk about insurance. And one thing you say is, is why you should not buy, uh, it has to do with insurance, why you should not buy ordinary life insurance. And yet I've heard just the contrary to that. For young people getting married, they shouldn't buy what they call term. You should just no. buy... Most people buy the wrong kind of insurance because the insurance companies push the kind of insurance that make them the most money, reasonable thing to do, right. and they give an incentive to their salesmen to push the most profitable kind. What you want when you buy insurance is insurance, just the protection right. in case you depart. What a whole But isn't life that ordinary life insurance? That's term. Term life right. insurance is just protection. Right. Um, and no matter, even if you've only had the policy for, for four months, if you die, they pay off the whole thing. Right. Uh, whole life, which has much higher premiums and is much more profitable for the insurance companies, um, is a savings plan as well as insurance. But, um, you know, they could also sell you a, a swimming pool and a few other things that, that, that they, they want to sell you. You're only interested in insurance to try to buy your savings plan from the same fellow who drives up in his very fancy car that you're paying for and, and has a whole marketing staff behind him. Um, it's so not, buy the insurance you need at the time. That's right. to cover your... To buy a savings plan from an insurance salesman just doesn't pay a good rate of interest. People do the calculations and say, hey, I could do much better even at the savings bank or, or elsewhere. I like the one thing you had on savings. You said rather than buying this or that, you should invest in tuna or something like that. Uh, I think you should, every, everybody should have $1,000 with tuna and what else? I know you're being <laughs> this, facetious sure. in a way, well, but you're I making have, a point. Um, people talk about the end of the world and you should buy gold and a shotgun and all that. You can't eat gold. If you, if you want to kind of save some money very well, uh, make 40% tax free on $1,000. Unfortunately, you can't do it on the second and third thousand. But uh, if you buy your tuna fish when it's on sale, and right. you buy your shaving cream when it's an incredible special, you buy it by the case, um, and you get a case discount, I buy my wine by the case instead of bottle by bottle. Right. I'm not talking about investment grade wine, just, right. um, well, I get a 10% discount when I do it, and if I go through four cases a year, by tying up $30 in a case of wine, Instead of buying at 250 a bottle, right. this is very terrific wine we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> drinkable stuff. <laughs> drinkable I mean, it stuff. Does its, does its job, right? I, I save three dollars on that 30 four times a year, so I'm saving 12 dollars on 30 dollars, which is 40 percent return, and the government doesn't tax that. If I put the same 30 dollars in the savings account, I, in a daily savings account, I would get five and a half percent interest theoretically, but the government would come and take half of it 
in taxes. So on a limited amount of your money, I mean, everyone knows yeah. to buy things on sale, but go over, uh, you know, go overboard. Buy cases, in other words, a toilet paper, if, <laughs> which you're going to... If you see something on, you're on need. sale... <laughs> Unless you have a terrible problem. Uh, I mean, complete uh, a breakdown of the human body. <laughs> Then go buy a case or two, rather than five or six rows. It's, it's, for the first thousand dollars, it's great. Uh, then pay off all your charge cards to uh, people, an awful lot of people. 18% a year on most charge cards? You're paying 18%, and many people don't itemize their tax deductions. Uh, don't itemize their deductions. They take the standard deduction. So they're really paying 18% at the same time as they have some money in a savings account that is earning five or even 8%, but the government's taking half. So yeah. on one hand, they're paying out 18 cents on the dollar at the same time as they've taken three. Most people don't know, I'm sure, that uh, banks, well, I'll about here from the bankers on this, but it's a fact that savings and loan companies can pay a high interest rate on savings in banks by law, right? The, than commercial uh, banks. Than commercial banks. Right. And yet people still put savings accounts in, uh, in commercial banks. You know, the, the thing, a quarter of a percent, uh, for the kind of money that most people have, myself included, right. when you figure it out after the end of the year and then you take away the government's share, um, it's not really worth running around for sure. If, you, if there are two banks right next to each other and one pays right. a quarter percent more, fine. But the, the problem people have is either they're intimidated by money altogether, and so they don't learn anything about it, or else they burrow in for the trees instead of the forest, and which one stock should I buy, or what one place could I get a quarter of a percent, without stepping back and saying, hey, if I set up a Keo plan or an individual retirement account, I wouldn't have to pay any taxes on that interest. Or if I, it's deferred, or if I put the money in my child's name. That's a self-employed type of... Uh... If you're, if you're self-employed, you set up a Keogh plan, but if you're on a payroll, uh, but not already covered by a pension plan, you set up a thing called an individual retirement account. It's so simple. Congress said it's finally time to have a loophole, a tax loophole for the little guy. Right. Forty million people qualify to set these plans up, and but only right. four million people have done it. Who should they go to? To, to do this if they don't go, understand in the limited go time. Go right down to the, to the local savings bank and ask, ask about it. Other institutions offer... Or an individual retirement plan or a Keogh plan. That's right. And there's 35 million people right there who are missing one of the few, you know, it, it's not a free lunch entirely, but it, it, you defer taxes until you retire. And the difference it can make on someone who puts just 1000 or $2,000 away a year, average people, over a lifetime, it's a difference of $100,000 at the other end. So we'll be right back. not have a chance really to get in all the little intricacies of this book because there are lots of interesting things in here some of the uh, rip-offs and things uh, how people get taken and what not to do and I'd love you to come back tonight and we'll spend a little more time on this because it's really fascinating I'd love to and people might as you say most people do get intimidated by banks uh, lawyers uh, so forth and taxes and get confused but there's a limited amount of simple information for most people and the, the complicated stuff isn't really for most people it's for people who have loads of money or manage loads of money right Come back soon with us, will you? Thank you. I'm humbled by that applause. 